What's up class and welcome back to another lesson in the Nomad Shop class here on the School Zone. Got an amazing response to my manufacturing video last week so I really appreciate that. I also mentioned in the video that there's a hidden trick to getting rich off of manufacturing and that's what I'm going to show you today. Something I don't think has ever been shown on YouTube before. And we're going to do that over at Abernathy Farm where I set up that simple assembly. But before we get to all that it's time for a peek at this month's Wall of Fame. As you guys may have seen in past videos I feature the names of my amazing Patreon supporters once a month on this here wall of fame and here are my fantastic Patreons this month. I really want to thank you all for helping me get a little bit closer to doing YouTube full time. We are literally a few dollars away from an upgrade to my microphone which I do think will be a wee bit of a game changer to the channel. So if you want to be the one that pushes us over the line jump on over to my Patreon page and join the varsity team. <laughs> I'm still playing around with a name to call my Patreons, but that's what I'm leaning towards. Let me know what you guys think. You know, something school themed. And speaking of school themed, hop on board the school bus and I'll meet you back at my Abernathy studio set. Okay, here we are. Now, as I mentioned in the last video, there aren't many items that can be built with the manufacturing system that offer a profit over and above what it takes in raw materials to build them. In fact, some items require rather rare components that you can't even buy from vendors. Most of the time, building things with the manufacturing system is really more of a matter of fun or convenience. The closest most people know how to come to making a profit from manufacturing is using the auto loom to create, you know, like clean suits. Now you can start your own Brooks Brothers factory if you want. With mass production, those do offer a little bit of profit, but there is another item capable of being built that most people don't even know can turn into a profit, and that is the vault tech lunch boxes. I know, right? Most of you are calling BS right now. Nope, this is the clickbait. When do I ever clickbait you guys? Just watch the whole video and you'll be mind blown. In fact, I did some preliminary research and I think I might be the first to make a video about this. If I'm not, and this was, you know, buried somewhere in an old video, my sincerest apologies. I always try to make these discoveries on my own and it's never my intent to copy anyone. So to get this going, we can keep the basic infrastructure of what I've already built here. All I need to do is swap out the pyrotechnics mill with the junk builder and then reprogram it for the vault lunch lunchboxes. So let's do that real quick and then I'll kind of continue explaining how this is all gonna work and make a profit. All right, so I'll just store that. Grab the builder, pop that into place. And then I'm not gonna bother with any trick wiring for this video. So I'm just gonna hook this right over to the vacuum hopper and then let's get out the terminal. And program this for the lunch boxes. There we go. Okay, now, as you can see from what the terminal says here, you only need three steel to make the lunch boxes. So make a mental note of that for later in the video and you'll see why. And at this point, we don't need the terminal anymore, so I can just store that. And then to make things fast convenient for the second trick involving the lunchboxes, I'm going to add a quick addition over to the left here. And you'll see why I'm doing that in a moment as well. Now I just need to hook these up real quick. I'm not going to do anything fancy. <laughs> I'm just doing this to get the wires out of our way. Okay, that should be good enough. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off for the moment. And I'm also going to get rid of this as well. Oh, and I came up with another idea for a catch-all bin if you want more of like the industrial look or even the wooden scrappy look. So I won't be using those, but I'll show you it real quick kind of as a bonus tip. Okay, so for more of the industrial look, we can go into the concrete section under floors and go over to this uh, small floor right here. And then in the scaffolding section, 
you've got these uh, railings. You just pop these railings right over here. Okay, and that creates a little bin, and I've tested it out, and there's not really much that's going to slip through these little cracks right here, you know, just because of the bounding boxes. So it'll catch anything that's going to fall in there. That's a nice little touch. Um, but if you want something that looks more like a wooden scrappy bin, then here's another option for you. Just go into the wood section and go to floors. And you can use these little floors, or if you want it to look even scrappier, you can use something like this shack floor here. And then just head over to miscellaneous and use like some of these rails. Or even these, you know, right here. Yeah, or those, those might be a little tall, but uh, yeah, that kind of creates a cool little bend for you there. Isn't that pretty cool? So that's another option to use besides something like the bathtub. That little round chair bin that I had that I just uh, disabled a moment ago is really cool, but it, not for necessarily for large items. So if you want larger items, you can either glitch some couches together in the same fashion or build something kind of cool like this. That was our little bonus tip, our little extra credit for the day. <laughs> you know, just wanted to show you some alternatives real quick. Now I'm gonna get rid of all this and I'm gonna build something better suited for showing off what we'll be doing today. Okay, that ought to be good enough. Uh, this way we have, you know, a nice little display floor where uh, you'll be able to see everything in a cleaner fashion rather than the wood slats with all the patterning on it. So all we need to do now is just uh, go grab some steel and pop it into the steamer trunk. Got some steel in here. Now, it takes three steel to make each lunchbox, so I'm just going to put 30 steel in here. So. That way we'll make 10 of them. So I'll just start off with 10 just to give you an idea of how this works. But this whole concept here is best done with mass production. Okay, so I'm going to start the process here. Steel's going to start coming out. It's going to start landing on this uh, conveyor belt. Head into our builder. And the builder should, if I hooked it up correctly, it should start pressing. There we go. I was like, what did I do wrong? <laughs> Okay, now I don't think there's a way to speed up this process right here. I know you can speed up the speed of the vacuum hopper and the conveyors and stuff, but I don't think you can speed this thing up. So I'm just gonna let it uh, continue cranking out these lunch boxes and I'll fast forward until we have uh, 10 that are ready. <laughs> oh, and I guess I could go ahead and uh, make it a slightly clearer day. We're getting a little haze going on here. There we go. Okay, so I'll just fast forward until it finishes. Okay, I think it's done. Let's check and see if there's 10 in here. There's nine. Oh, there's 10, okay. He was still moving along the conveyor. So what I'm gonna do now is step on this uh, pressure plate and they should all slide down onto this platform. <laughs> okay, that is pretty cool. So what I'm gonna do now is line these up just so you can see them a little better. And this is also kind of a tedious thing. You won't need to do this. I'll explain a better way to mass produce them near the end of the video, but I'll go ahead and fast forward this process just so you guys can see this technique a little easier.
Okay, very cool. So I'm gonna quick save here. Or I'll just regular save, actually. Okay, so at this point, I think some of you probably know where I'm going with this. When you find ball tech lunch boxes in the environment, you can walk up to them and open them. It gives you the option to open them and a prize comes out. But with some ball tech lunch boxes, and also the ones that you produce through the builder, it doesn't give you the option to open them. It just gives you the option to take them. And then, you know, it goes into your miscellaneous inventory and you probably thought all they're good for is just decoration. Well, that's not actually the case. You can open them. You just have to do it in a way that you may not have thought of. And that is by shooting them. All right. So uh, I'm going to, we won't go that extreme. I'll use my splatter cannon. And I'm going to shoot this now, and it's going to open up with a prize. So let's check out and see what it gives us. And it looks like it gave us a tablespoon, okay? So here's the situation with these vault tech lunch boxes. Each time you open the lunch box, it gives you one of like maybe two dozen or something different prize options inside. Now, most of the prizes inside are gonna be very cheap items like spoons and pencils and gum and things like that. But it's kind of like the lottery, all right? There's gonna be some options in there that are extremely valuable. In fact, the most valuable item I've gotten through this method so far during the test was a fusion core. All right, that would be awesome if I can get it on camera, but you know, Murphy's Law. We'll probably get a lot of spoons and stuff, but I've gotten robot models. I've gotten aid items, Nuka-Colas, Nuka-Cola Quantums, all kinds of stuff. And the idea here is, is that it only costs three steel to make these things, all right? And I've already gotten one steel back, at least. This is at least one steel, if not uh, two. It could be aluminum, I can't remember. But uh, the idea is it's gonna at least give you back something, which is either they're going to be some more resources or potentially something very valuable. All right. Now, if you luck out and get a bunch of uh, fusion cores, then, well, actually, if out of these 10 here, if we just get one fusion core, I've already made up the price for all the steel I've spent making these 10. So if we, let's say we get two Nuka Colas, I think those are like 20 each and we get a robot model. That's a hundred, I think. If you wanted to sell it, it'd be better for decorating actually. But you know, we'll get a few of these things and the combined value of all the prizes that you'll get from is going to be more than the value for building them, all right? So if you do this in mass, not only will you potentially get a whole lot of value that you can sell at them, but you're going to get a whole lot of cool decoration items too. Now, I know what some of you guys are thinking, Paul, you're wasting ammo shooting these things and that costs money. Well, there's another way that you can open them and that is to go over and grab a melee weapon. So I've got this pool cue here. I'll just equip that, and what we'll do now is uh, play a little pinata with these uh, lunch boxes. And all you have to do is just whack them, and it's the same thing as shooting them, all right? Check it out. So we got some gun drops, a plastic spoon, pencil. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. There's some more gum drops. There's some gum. I knew in the test I would get something that wouldn't show up on camera. Oh, there's a baseball. Oh, and there's a noodle cup. Okay, now, here's the cool... Well, there's a couple of cool things about this, so don't die. Don't click away just yet. All right, first of all, the items are randomly generated upon opening, not upon being loaded into the cell, you know, or upon being produced in this case. So what I could do right now is I'm going to reload that save real quick and show you that all the items that I open up this way are going to be a little bit different. So let's give it a try. Spoon. Pencil. Oh, there's a Nuka Cola. Nice. Two Nuka Colas. Very cool. Some more gumdrops. Oh, there's some Dandy Boy Apples. Right on. And there's a baseball. So the combined value of everything there is uh, probably like, it's gonna be somewhere around 
50 or so, uh, depending on your vendor perks and your charisma and things like that. But we've already made up the price of what we spent on the steel. Now, each time you do this, it has the potential, like I said, of something super valuable. So on average, if you're gonna get at least back what you spend on the resources with the potential to get even higher value, then this is the way to go for making a profit. You know, it'd be kind of like buying one of those scratch cards for a dollar where you always get back at least a dollar. You know what I mean? Now, it's not gonna work if you make just one of them. You need to make one of them and you just get a, like a plastic spoon and that's only a value of like one, whereas I think steel is like three. All right, but you guys get the idea. Now, here's the other cool thing, okay? So this is why I built this little uh, contraption here. I'm going to turn this off. All right, so I'm going to grab these lunch boxes. Oh, by the way, have you ever noticed there's a little face in there? I don't know if you can see it or not, but... Uh, there's a little face. Look at them closely when you, you probably can't see it very well on, on the screen, but uh, there are little faces of boys and girls inside the lunch boxes scraped in there with a, with a knife or something. <laughs> so you've got this spent lunch box here, okay? Now I don't seem to be able to do anything with it. I can pick it up, but that's about it. If you go into your workshop mode, it says repair, but it doesn't really give you the option to repair it, all right? You can place it, but that's it. But check this out, okay? I'm going to uh, load this last one onto the conveyor here, turn it on, let these cycle up through the conveyor and uh, out to the hopper there. Okay, and then check this out. All right, we got a nice pile of all repaired <laughs> vault deck lunch boxes. All right, so I'm gonna fast forward again and line these up. And by the way, for those of you who are new to the channel that don't know how I'm rotating these things, I will put a link in the description to one of my first tips video that explains exactly how to do that. Okay, so these are all our prizes from the first attempt, and we're gonna make a second attempt now. Now, I'm just gonna let you know ahead of time that when they get repaired through this method, they're not always gonna have prizes in them, okay? I think it reduces it by like 50% chance or something. I don't know if there's a formula to it. That's just what I've been able to estimate through my own tests. And then if you repair them again, it drops down another half to like 25%, etc. cetera, until at some point they're just all gonna be duds, okay? But you do have the opportunity to get another item out of them sometimes without having to spend any more resources, okay? So you see where this is going, right? Let's give it a shot. Dud. 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 Plastic. Dud. 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 Of course, of course, on camera, I get one. <laughs> All right, guys, well, you're just gonna have to trust me. When I did this in the test, uh, the first time I got a fusion core, you know, and some Nuka-Colas and stuff, this, when I reloaded and did it a second time, I got some Nuka-Cola Quantums. And then when I reloaded them back through this uh, hopper method, at least half of them opened up again, okay? Of course, I always say this, Murphy's Law, because I'm recording this, you guys aren't seeing it. And I don't feel like going through the process of reloading a hundred times just to show you something that, that isn't honest. You know, I'd rather you guys see that it's not gonna work 100% of the time. But the thing is, is that, you know, if you wanted to, you could uh, grab these and reload them back in again, give it another shot until you basically get bored of doing this. And, and by the way, it, at the very least, it's going to repair them to the point where they can be good decoration items. If you don't want 100 Vault Tech lunchboxes decorating your settlements, then uh, you can always, 
either sell the lunch boxes at a vendor. I don't know how much they go for, to be honest, but uh, you know, you can always create a junk pile out behind your settlement. Okay, so we got a nice little stash here. You know, I did much, much better in the test. So it just, it's random. It's the way random works. And the higher priced value items are obviously, the uh, the developers gave them a, a smaller probability to occur. Uh, most of the time you're gonna get plastic and pencils and stuff. But you know, pencil, hey, this is one piece of wood. Uh, that's one piece of plastic. That's one piece of steel or aluminum. I'm not sure. Uh, let me grab this real quick and and just check. It is steel. Okay, so, you know, we got at least one steel back from that. Um, you know, these other items are good aid items, or you can sell them. So, you guys get the idea. And then I think, I'm not positive, but I think you can sell these at vendors too. I'll have to research that. Or you guys can leave a comment about how much you can sell them for at vendors if you happen to know off the top of your head. But anyway, now that you see how this works, uh, there is a faster way to accomplish this rather than lining them up and uh, just whacking them on a platform like this. What I would do if I was to, you know, start over with a new character and I wanted to make a whole bunch of caps, you know, fairly without duplication glitches or anything like that, then what I would do is I would build this conveyor. So instead of having the hopper right there, I would have a long conveyor that ended up in a conveyor storage bin. I would set up some kind of wall on the back of this conveyor, and then I'd get some really cheap ammo, like, you know, 38s or something, or I could still use the, the stick, whatever you want to use. And basically, each time a lunchbox came down the conveyor, I would just give it a whack and whatever would pop out beside it and it would end up in the storage bin as uh, an item that I could pull out, as well as the repaired lunchbox. All right, so how cool is that? Anyway, my friends, that is how you get rich off of manufacturing, especially at early levels in the game. Obviously, the higher level you are, the less you need money, but it's nonetheless a fun little trick, all done without console commands, duplication cheats, or mods. So I hope you found that helpful. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and throw a like on the video, and I'll see you soon with another fun lesson. Happy building, and class dismissed.